Hey guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about something that has been dipped thousands and thousands of times, um, but we figured we'd do a quick little video on it, show you guys a few things about it. Uh, had a customer come in and they wanted their Yeti cup dipped. And so we thought, you know what? be a great thing to do for a video. Of course, I know we're way late to the game on how to dip a Yeti cup. There's like tons of videos out there, but wanted to go over a quick little video, uh, help you guys out if you ever do get these videos in the future. Hopefully this will help you out. So um, we've already got our Yeti cup here. Uh, so on something like this, uh, we have actually taped off this bottom edge all the way down through here. So we've got a nice little line all the way around here. It's all taped off on the bottom. So that way you get a nice little stainless part and also your coating is not always getting hit or moved around um, on the table and getting scratched up a lot. Uh, some customers want the full coating all the way. Other customers just want from this tape line up. It's strictly up to you on how you wanna do it or up to the customer. Um, so kind of talk a little bit about the cup and what film that we're doing it in. So the film that the customer picked is a, um, a very vibrant film. Uh, it's a really cool pattern. I think you guys are really gonna love it. It is our SAD 752, and it's an illusion film that it's pretty much, it's, uh, what is this? I think it's called a um, illusion camouflage or something like that. Maybe, I don't know, I'm, pretty, I'm sure that's probably wrong. But a uh, pretty neat little film because it gives a pretty neat uh, illusion of just tons of different colors and everything like that. So um, the other thing is, of course, this is a silver backed film. So there's not really gonna be hardly any um, color that does show through, but what we have done is, is we have actually base coated this in a silver. And so, uh, of course, we've got a silver metallic right here. And so having this silver metallic on top of the cup, and then of course, having the silver metallic uh, or having the silver back on the film uh, gives it a couple of things. Number one, whenever you dip it, whenever the light hits it, after it's been clear coated, it really has a good little pop to it and it has a really neat effect. And so that's kind of why we went with the silver is to give it that extra pop. Now, could you use a white? Yes, you certainly could. Um, could you use almost any other color? Yeah, you probably could, um, but it will affect it just a little bit on getting the right, um, on, on getting your base colors underneath it to what the film actually looks like. Now, it's not gonna change it a lot, but it will change it a little bit. So um, definitely wanna do a little bit of sampling if you're not for sure, just to see what it looks like. So um, we've got our cup here, and of course we've got our film. So now let's talk about how we're going to dip that. So pretty much we've got our film laid out in the water, and uh, you know, there's there's a couple of different ways to dip these, but there's really only about one way to do it um, the right way and to get a really good coverage all the way around. And so normally that way is going to be, um, of course, first, we're going to clean out this edge in here. Um, second, we're gonna take this and we're gonna lean it on its side and we're gonna dip it down like this. And so the whole motion to this is we're going to come down at an angle and then drop it down halfway. And then once we got it about halfway in the water, then we're gonna take and we're gonna roll it the rest of the way actually going forward or away from me. And so to kind of break that down a little bit more, as we're going down in the water, you wanna keep it at an angle like this to allow that air to escape out of this part right here. So as you're going down into the water, you're gonna go down about halfway. So we're gonna stop it about right here and right here. And then we're gonna take this end of the cup here and then slowly go down to where we have a line going across here and then we have a line going across back there. And so then whenever we have it coming down and in like that, then we're going to take and twist it 180 degrees. And so there's a couple of key things that you definitely wanna make sure that you do. As you're coming down, you come down and you got, you got down to this point right here, you're great. But a lot of people, what I see is they will take and they'll just spin it just like this. And so what that does is, is it'll actually stretch the film into the cup. And then whenever you come back to your line that you have on the 
from the first dip here and then whenever you go to, to spin it like that you don't actually move it forward what happens is is that as you're spinning that you're of course constantly stretching that film and so as you're constantly stretching that film then what happens is, is that whenever the two lines meet up from right here to right here this part is really stretched as it comes around this part right here because it wasn't stretched it looks all nice and pretty and so then whenever these two come together you have a really great looking part right here and you have a really stretched out part right here and of course that definitely does not look good now if i turn it over here and, and you're seeing just this dip part here or just this dip part right here without the line yeah it looks great but whenever you get over to the line way back over here it definitely does not so the key thing in this is that as you come down and then you flatten it back out you always want to make sure that you roll it just like this thing was sitting on the table right here and rolling across the table you want to go the same amount of distance and try to as much as you can rolling it into that film like that so it's definitely very critical because you definitely want to make sure that you don't get any stretch because you want your line to whenever it meets up to be almost identical as far as from one non-stretch part right here to one non-stretch part right here so that way both of them are unique they're the same and everything lines up really well so the other thing is is that because this right here is a fairly non-directional it does have a little bit of lines coming in through right here and then in through right here but we can adjust that a little bit and I don't think you're really gonna see that too much but um, if you had like for instance a carbon fiber or something that was like a plaid pattern where it had to be like straight up and down that's gonna be really hard to get set and then the other thing is, is wherever your line is gonna be it'll almost never match up correctly. So that's another thing that you definitely wanna make sure of is that the customer knows that wherever that line is gonna be, they're not going to match up. Of course, you try your best to get them all lined up exactly perfect, but at the end of the day, that line that you've got right here in the back of the cup, it may not match up. And so um, definitely wanna make sure that the customer's just definitely aware of that before you go and you dip the cup. A uh, couple of other things to kind of note on this. Um, you've got a logo up here on the front of the cup, right? Uh, in this case, this one's an Orca. They make all kinds of the Yetis and everything else in between. But uh, this is what we would call the front of the cup, all right? And so then, of course, you spin it 180 degrees to where the logo is back here. This would be the back of the cup. And so a lot of the times what we try to do is, is uh, two things. Number one, if you have a customer and they want to have for instance their logo or their name or like a you know a something on the back of the cup then of course this is going to be the best real estate because you've got this big logo up here uh, sometimes if it's like a yeti you may have it down here so you can actually still put it up top but in this case because it's right here we try to go ahead and put it on the back side so that way we have plenty of room right in here to put that logo so which means that whenever you're dipping, you have to make sure where you're gonna put your line at. And so if this was a Yeti and this was not here, then I would have it saying Yeti right there. And then I would have a nice little logo or something like that right up in here. So then that way we have pretty much the front of the cup. And then of course the seam would be on the back of the cup. But in this case, because we have this right here, and if the customer had wanted something on the back, now we have to either do it on this side or this side of the cup. So definitely want to make sure that whenever you're dipping, you make sure that you get that line 100% lined up on where it needs to be. Because of course you don't want a line going right down the middle of this right here. And then of course, it's not that the dip was bad, but looking at it you don't want a line right there and so I uh, definitely want to make sure that you that you look into that before you go to dip that so um, let's go ahead let's get our film together and uh, lay it out here and let's pretty much get started so here we go so with a cup like this in reality you only need say an inch or two over and an inch or two over but 
Um, and, and, and that should be enough to wrap this entire cup. Like if you had a piece of vinyl, that'd be more than enough. But in reality, you actually have to go further than that to actually dip the cup correctly. And so the reason is, is that you have to be able to fit your hands in the film as well because if not then you have your dividers that are sitting right here then of course they're not going to allow your hands to go down into the water so in this case this is one of those rare instances where we're going to need about six inches of space on the front and about six to eight inches on the back and so the main reason is you want to be able to comfortably fit your hands down in the film and then of course roll it just like what we talked about so Let's get our knife. Where's the knife? Okay, got the knife. -y. Okay, got the knife. Let's go ahead and get started. So, again, we're going to give ourselves plenty of room for our left hand and, of course, plenty of room for our right hand. So, in this case, we're going to cut this film a little bit longer than normal, but for video purposes, we'll kind of show you that. And there we go. So on something like this, of course, we'll come down. We want plenty of room to come up and around. And so then as we wrap it around here, with this being a 50 centimeter wide film, I'll just go ahead and leave this whole film. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably cut it off about right here, cut off a couple of inches or so of this right here if I needed to. But in this case, because it's a 50 centimeter wide, we're just gonna use just the whole thing and it'll still be fine. So. Um, we've got that. We've got everything ready to go. A uh, couple of things. Um, also, to the top of the rim. Uh, if you are able to find something to fit into it, you can do that. So, like for instance, we have a, a paint mixing cup that we can fit inside this right here. That helps and that works really well. Um, also, too, if you don't have that, the next best thing you can do is you can tape it and so uh, the majority of the reason why we're going to tape it like this is because we mainly just don't want to get any of the actual film down into this and so having that that border like that really helps it wrap around that edge as well as not go all the way down into the cup itself and so um, with something like this uh, just a quick and simple back tape around this top edge and then you're good to go and then you can hold it like this and then dip it and then you're good um, or of course if you needed to you can use the cup or even i've seen some people get like pool noodles or anything even balloons that they've stuck down in there and then that has been able to help them hold that like that and then they can hold this right here as they come in and then wrap it around like that so whatever way works best for you Definitely do that. Uh, those are just a couple of examples that you can do um, if you don't have or if you don't want to go this route or something like that. So let's get this in the water and get started. All right, so we've got the water set at 80 to 90 degrees. And then of course, we're gonna let it soak for one minute on the water. And so like with this film right here, you can see that it's starting to like really get a lot of wrinkles in it, but yet now it's pretty much like um, going away. And so um, it's not anything to be concerned about or to be worried about. Some films just do that, not really a big issue. Um, also too, uh, I know a couple of you have said a couple of things on it, so I just kinda wanted to clarify. A lot of the times whenever we're making the videos, you know, you don't see me wearing a respirator. Definitely wanna wear one. It's definitely great for personal protection, but as we're doing the videos, it's really hard to talk and everything like that. So of course, we do it mainly just for video purposes, but we do have our big exhaust fan here whenever we're doing all of our other jobs. So that way it helps pull all of those fumes and everything like that out of there. So um, pretty much we got one minute on the water. Let's go ahead and spray it with the activator and get started. All right, so it looks like everything glassed out really well, which is exactly what we wanted. We're gonna hold this here and then slowly go down with it.
and then we're going to stop and then we're going to slowly wrap it around just like this all the way around and then once we've made it all the way then we're going to take that move a little bit of the film out of the way and then we'll pull it back out and then there we have our entire cup dipped in a really cool pattern uh, customers definitely going to love that and so of course you can see we got a little bit of excess right in here a lot of that will all wash off so not really too concerned about that but we got really beautiful coloring all the way around and um, I think the customer is definitely going to love it. So we'll go ahead, we'll get it rinsed off, get it clear coated, show you guys the end results, so stay tuned. All right, so we've got everything clear coated, everything came out amazing. I think the customer is definitely going to love it. So as you can see, as we was talking about before, we have our Orca symbol right here. So um, of course we have our front here and then going along, we have a very nice dip all the way around. Of course, we do have our seam right here. There's, again, no way you can prevent that on the dip, but everything else came out really good. And so the nice thing is, like I was talking about before, if we have the front here and then we wanted to go to the back, then we have a clear back that we can go ahead and put like a decal or a logo or anything like that on. And then of course, make it a lot more personalized even with just, um, even from the actual, uh, the hydro dipping itself. So um, we've already got all, all of this pulled out. Again, like I was saying, the nice thing about taping this up is, is that, you know, whenever you do take and you uh, put it down on the table like this, then of course, it's not getting messed up because it's just on the normal stainless itself. So um, I hope you guys have been really, really enjoyed this video. I know we always do. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them below. We'd love to hear from you on anything hydrographics related. And also let me know your thoughts on the cups. What do you like? What do you not like? Um, have you had a pattern that just uh, gave you a hard time? definitely let us know we'd love to hear from you on that and as always if you haven't already hit the subscribe button i'd love to have you subscribe to our weekly tips and tricks on anything hydrographics related i'm brian from liquid concepts and this is how we customize your world we'll see you guys next time